Hi, my name is Alex with Daytech Tech Tutorials, and today I got 10 features in Jira that you're probably not using today that you might want to consider using. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you drop a like, and if you have any questions about anything, please let me know in the comment section below. If you're using a feature that is not covered in this list, please let me know in the comment section below as well. I'd love to do a follow-up video and include your feature in a future video. All right, with that said, let's jump into Jira and let's talk about feature number one. So feature number one that I'm gonna talk about is a Jira project, specifically a Jira software project, and more specifically a company manager of software project, can actually have more than one board. This is really important if you have two teams that they, you want them to have their own backlog, you want them to be able to control, start and stop their own sprint, but you don't want them to be in two different projects. This is going to be a really powerful feature, but you wanna be careful because an issue should only be in one sprint at any given time. You never want the same issue to be in two sprints, two concurrent sprints, because if you do that, Jira will basically treat them as one and bad things will happen. So you have to use a field that can only have one option as a selection so that you ensure that that issue will only be in either board A or board B. So let's take a look at Jira and see how to make that happen. So in Jira, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is create a new board. And so I have an existing scrum board here. I'm gonna create a new board and I'm just gonna create another scrum board because I want this to be for another scrum team. Scrum team B, okay. now. I'm just going to put this in my existing project and I'm gonna create the board. The problem here though is when you create two boards, you'll notice that when I look at the two different backlogs, they're exactly the same. I don't want that. I want to differentiate the issues that go to board A versus board B. And so to do that, you actually need to modify the filter query in order to ensure that the issue goes to only one place. And so by doing the editing the filter query, I'm actually going to select, I'm gonna to switch to basic to show you. I have a field called technical team here. And when I do this, I'm gonna send only team B issues to this project. I'm gonna hit save there. And now I'm gonna go back to the other board and do the exact same thing, but for team A. And so you're just doing the same thing where I'm going to the filter query. And now this time I'm gonna pick my technical team to be team A. So when I do this, I now have a defined filter that is essentially gonna show or send the issues to the right board. So if I want an issue to show up on one board or the other, I need to make sure that that field for technical team is filled out appropriately. And you can see that my backlog is not completely empty, but the issues aren't gone. So I can actually go to issues here, select an issue, on the right hand side, find technical team and then send it to either team A or team B. And when I do that and I go back to the backlog, you'll see that that issue is now there. Now this is, does get a little bit annoying because you gotta always make sure that that field is filled out. So you just have to make it a required field, but this will give you that ability to essentially in the same project have two separate backlogs. As you can see, this one's empty with their own sprints and still be able to uh, essentially see everything. And as an added bonus, you do have the ability to add a third board that will basically encompass all the boards and you'll be able to manage and see everything in just one board. So that is tip number one. Tip number two is when we come to the end of a sprint, sometimes those sprints aren't complete. Sometimes we have issues that aren't quite finished yet. And when you get to that scenario, when you get to the point where you're in a sprint you're in an active sprint and you're coming up to the end and the issue is not quite done. You're still in a install, in a review state, or maybe you're in a testing state that hasn't finished, but most, if not all of the work has been completed, you wanna consider splitting the issue. So before you close the sprint, you should take credit or you want, maybe you want to take credit for what has been completed. So to do that, all you're gonna to wanna to do is find your issue that is currently not finished you're gonna to wanna to be in the backlog view for this. And so you'll go to that issue, it'll be in the sprint, but in the backlog view. You're gonna click on it and you'll see that you have an option to split the issue. This will basically help you make a copy and you can basically essentially rename it to like part one or whatever was actually finished. Take credit for that work 
and then do a continue uh, installing um, part two. Now this is probably a bad example. You can either send it to the next sprint if you already have one, or you can send it to the top of that backlog. But this is gonna basically allow you to break it up. And if you wanna break it up into more pieces, you can do so. And by doing this, you can again take credit for what actually did get finished and then plan out future work that's gonna be done in future sprints. So that's tip number two. Tip number three, let's just say that you're in an active sprint and your team forgot to take credit. Maybe we did finish this installing the tub and you completed the sprint. Oh no, but you didn't get the credit that you wanted. So when you're in the sprint report, after you've essentially completed the sprint, and you can do this after the fact, so I can go back to a, a more previous sprint. You can essentially come over in the sprint report, you can come over to the right side. There's two ellipses, there's one at the top, don't click on that one, but there's a second ellipsis here. If you click on that one, you will have the option to reopen the sprint. Now I do wanna caution you, make sure you're doing this because you actually have a good logical reason to reopen sprints. You should do your due diligence. You should make sure that you're ready to close the sprint before you close the sprint. You wanna minimize the amount of times that you're reopening the sprint, not because bad things will happen, but because it's really bad behavior. You wanna make sure your team is actually committing and finishing their commitments before you close that sprint. So only reserve this uh, feature should you really, really need to reopen a sprint for a really, really good reason. But if you ever do, just click on that reopen sprint. I'm actually gonna reopen the one I just finished. And when you do that, the sprint will come back to life and, and then you're basically back in time. So that is feature number three. Feature number four, when you're creating an epic, it's kind of annoying that you have to take an epic name. This is my next epic. And then you have to put a title. Now, typically what I usually tell my teams is put the epic name and the title to be the same so that when you hit create, it is happy. However, if you're in the roadmap view, and I go in here and I create an epic. This is another great epic. And I hit enter. A couple of things are gonna happen here that really, really give you a, a lot of power. First, this epic that was created under the roadmap will have a couple of key things. One, it's gonna give you the epic name and the title up here and then the epic name down here to be exactly the same already on your behalf. So you don't have to do the extra clicking. Second, you'll notice that in, in the backlog view and under my epics, there's only one epic, but I just created an epic clicking on the blue create button. That epic is not here because it does not meet the new filter criteria that I set up in feature number one. So when you go to the roadmap view and you create the epics, you will notice that that technical field was automatically assigned to be the value that is appropriate for this board. So if you are leveraging feature number one, this feature here, I think we're on number four here, will be even more enhanced because it will automatically fill out that criteria to ensure that those issues do show up on this board. Now do keep in mind that this will not work if you're creating subtasks. If you're creating a subtask, you will still have to come in and fill out those additional fields unless you do an additional uh, things such as an automated rule, which is going to be the next feature we're going to talk about. Feature number five, if you're not using automated rules, I highly recommend you start taking a look at automated rules. Now, there, I'm not going to go into any details of automated rules because there's just, frankly, just too much to cover and that just needs to be like its own course, if you will. But just know that there's some rules and I'm just going to give you a teaser. I'm going to actually take you to Atlassian has an automation rules playground that you can go and get some inspiration. You can come in here, it's an automation playground and you can come all the way to the very bottom here and you can actually see some of the best practices, some of the more popular rules that are available at your disposal. Now I just talked about in feature number four about how you may wanna consider having a rule to copy values from, from the parent to the subtask so that you can ensure that the subtask is has the right fields filled out. And so you can do that. There is a sync section here. There's a sync issues. And so you can have when a field, uh, let's see if we can find it here. Here we go. This is a pretty good one. When the subtask is created, uh, copy the summaries from both the parent, parent and the epic. And so you can modify these as you need, but essentially whenever an issue is created and it's of the type subtask, 
then this will happen. And so this is going to grab, it's going to create the title to be a combination of the epic summary and the parent summary. So that'll grab the, the epic and the story or the task for the bug and make one giant title. Um, obviously, you'd be able to set other fields like the technical team that we created, right, that, that we have. You'll be able to find those fields and, and be able to bring them in here and essentially set them based on the parent. So you can actually do this and do copy from and you can copy from the, the trigger issue or the parent or something like that. So those are some other things that if you're not using automation, Highly recommend you start looking into automation rules. Very, very powerful stuff. Obviously, my field isn't going to show up here because it's not in my Jira. Not sure why I tried doing it, but take a look at automation rules. And if there's interest, let me know in the comment section below. I do plan at some point offering a more in-depth tutorial and courses into automation rules. And that's the first five features. Now, this video has gotten a little long, so we're going to cut it here. Make sure you drop a like. Make sure you're subscribed because I am going to basically do a part two where we're gonna cover the next six. So make sure you stick around for that. You're not gonna wanna miss those out.